This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Well, we finally get to the end of Chapter 12 here, dealing with Lecture 12.7. And this is the recording from Finance Act 2020 that you're going to see, which incidentally was the year in which this particular issue came into our syllabus. Payments on account for CGT on disposal of residential property. We've already seen that the CGT liability is basically due at one point in time with no payments on account in relation to it. And that one point in time is the 31st of January following the end of the tax year in which the disposals took place. But over the years, things have got harsher when it comes to people disposing of residential property. Not their own residential property, the one in which they live, for as we'll see in Chapter 14, that should be covered by private residence relief and mean that you buy a house, you live in it, you sell it, whenever later, how many years later, then any such gain made will be exempt. I say exempt, it is a private residence relief, but that relief will be effectively 100% in the vast majority of occasions. But in Chapter 14, we look at the nature of that relief you see the situations in which maybe some of that gain on the disposal of your private residence may still end up being chargeable. But here we're talking about the disposal of residential property that isn't your private main residence. It's an investment property there. And in relation to such, we already know that we have higher CGT rates. We're looking at the 18% and 28% rather than 10 and 20%. And what they also did back in relation to us for Finance Act 2020 was to brought in a requirement, to bring in, I should say, a requirement that some payments on account should be made as regards the capital gains tax that would be due on the disposal of a residential property. The only thing that, of course, will be different between the study notes for FA21 that you'll be looking at and what you'll see on screen here in this lecture is that in the illustration that we have, these dates are based in the 21-22 tax year, whereas they will be based in the 2021 tax year in the lecture that you see. Other than that, it is all exactly the same. Early on in this chapter, we learned how it was that residential property was treated far more harshly in the CGT system than the disposal of any other assets. When we looked at the tax rates applicable, we saw but instead of enjoying, if enjoying be the word, for a taxation charge, but instead of enjoying rates of 10% and 20% based on what's in the remaining basic rate band of the taxpayer and what then above that is in higher rate, was it 10, was it 20% therefore? Instead of those lower rates, we had these higher rates that were applicable to gains made, taxable gains, on the disposal of residential property, whereby instead of 10%, we had 18%, so 20%, we suffered a 28% rate. And on top of that, and what we're about to see here, there are other ways within the taxation system that, again, disposals of residential property have been more harshly dealt with over the past several years. But the only other issue that we need to be aware of here is this one, about payments on account. Not only are we going to pay more CGT, on the taxable gains made in relation to residential property. But what we're also going to do is to have to pay that tax, as we said at the end of last session, very, very much sooner than we would otherwise have to pay our tax. So let's just go back to our early studies. And we saw back in section 1.6 of the chapter that the CGT liability for a tax year was payable, well, I'm sure you know by now, by the 31st of January, following the end of the tax year. So for our tax year, 2021, that meant that the CGT had to be paid by 31st of January, 2022. And as you may already have discovered, but you, otherwise you'll discover later, in relation to Chapter 15, where admin is looked at, you will discover that not only does CGT usually paid in just one amount on the 31st of January following the end of the tax year, that is also a final deadline date for the payment of income tax in relation to, again, 
your 2021 tax year following 31st of January, 31st of January 2022. But now what we discover here is it comes a whole lot sooner. Now that usual rule for CGT is pretty generous. You could make a disposal on, say, uh, let's say the 1st of May 2022. So we're just under about one month into the 2021 tax year. Did I say 2020? We had a disposal on the 1st of May 2020, whether I said that or not. It's definitely now the 1st of May 2020. Just into the start of the 2021 tax year. And on that basis, any gain made on that sale, as long as it's not residential property, we wouldn't have to pay any tax until the 31st of January 2022. Now, that's a long old delay between selling the asset, making the gain, you've got your proceeds, you've got the cash in your pocket now from that sale. That was on the 1st of May 2020. You wouldn't have to pay your CGT until the 31st of January 2022. It was felt that that was far too generous when it came to the disposals of residential property. Now, again, as we mentioned early on in this chapter, and you'll see very specifically <coughs> at the end of chapter 14, where we deal with private residence relief, that if the residential property that we're talking about is simply the disposal of your primary main residence, your private main residence there, then you're going to get relief for that. And effectively, for the vast majority of taxpayers, not the one you'll see in your exam question, by the way, but the vast majority of taxpayers, when you sell the house that you have lived in, your primary main residence, then its disposal is going to attract private residence relief that will effectively exempt all of that gain. So it's only, therefore, gains that we're talking about that don't attract private residence relief that are going to be suffering the higher CGT rates and also the quicker payment date. What would now happen is if we disposed of a residential property that didn't attract private residence relief, we made a capital gain, then the CGT due on that disposal on the 1st of May 2020 would be due within 30 days of that disposal date. So here, a payment on account, however, along with, again, it's got to be accompanied by a return to HMRC, got to have the admin right, must be made within 30 days of the disposal of a residential property. So now, with this new rule that has come in, you dispose of any other asset on the 1st of May 2020, any tax that may be payable in relation to that gain won't be payable until the 31st of January 2022. But if that is now a residential property, then the disposal on the 1st of May 2020 demands that the CGT be paid and a tax return submitted for it by the end of that month, by the 31st of May 2020. Clearly, that is a serious change in relation to when you have to pay your tax. We don't have payments on account for CGT on any other assets. It's purely this one specific circumstance. Now, we know how to compute taxable gains for the tax year, and we then know how to tax those taxable gains, depending on whether there is any basic rate band remaining from our income tax computation or whether we're straight into higher rate. We know how to do that. But now, as we're only part way into the tax year, how do we know how to compute the CGT? You will remember that against any gain made in the tax year, there are various deductions that would be available to you. We would firstly have the ability to net out gains and losses of the tax year. We would then have our AEA available for the tax year. And if after that we're still looking at some gain taxable, then the possibility, if we had losses brought forward, that they would now be used against the gain. So when we're looking at this one-off transaction, this disposal partway through the tax year of residential property, demanding this very immediate CGT payment, what do we set off against 
that gain to then work out our CGT liability. Right, we can deal with that now because we've got this note. In computing that payment on account, the following deductions should be made from the gain. So this is your learning bit now. Again, become aware of it at this point, but it's very, very specific learning exercise, the sort of thing that closer to exam date, you need to revisit and make sure that you know this order of deductions. Firstly, any current tax year capital losses, but only those incurred prior to the property disposal. You do not know whether after the disposal of this residential property, but within this same tax year, there may be other disposals that may indeed yield losses. So the only losses that we could offset are those capital losses in the year incurred prior to the property disposal. So with the illustration that we'll see very shortly, and a likely situation in an exam question, this would be a very, very, I'm going to say easy question, easy for the examiner to set in section A, testing out this issue. You would have a list of disposals during the tax year 2021. There would be clearly a gain on the disposal of a residential property. There would probably be one other gain of another asset, non-residential, not a residential property. And you'd probably have a couple of losses sustained in the tax year, one before the disposal of the residential property and the other after the disposal of the residential property. So what can we do? The current year capital loss, but only the one, if there is one, incurred prior to the property disposal taking place. We do, however, get to deduct the full AEA of the tax year, and we get to deduct any capital losses brought forward at the start of the tax year. So the AEA, the losses brought forward, are deducted in full. They are earmarked to go against this particular gain on the residential property in computing how much is taxable at this point and therefore what the payment on account will be that has to be paid within the next 30 days of that disposal. But in terms of the current year losses, only those incurred prior to the property disposal. Now that would allow you to compute the taxable gain, of course, but then it comes down to, OK, but there's two CGT rates. There's 18% and there's 28% as regards the disposal of a residential property. And that links to the income tax computation. Well, you're not going to know what your taxable income is on that computation. With my example, disposal 1st of May 2020, uh, pay the tax by the 31st of May 2020, we're only a couple of months into the tax year. Of course, we don't know the taxable income. So it will also require an estimate of how much, if any, of the taxpayer's basic rate band will be available for the tax year. This information, you don't have to worry about it, that will be provided in the exam. You'll be told what that estimate in terms of the, uh, whether there's any basic rate band remaining or whether they're just a higher rate taxpayer you'll be told what that figure is. In reality, again, most people, of course, are employees. Their only source of income is employment income, and you pretty much know what that is going to be for the year. So it's not wouldn't be that difficult to make that estimate. But the practicalities are not your problem. You are going to be told here what that estimate will be in terms of the income, so that you could establish if you are just a basic rate taxpayer, how much basic rate band remained, or quite simply, you're a higher rate taxpayer, and therefore, you know, there's just a single rate to apply. But that's just the payment on account. Of course, we still need, following the end of the tax year, to work out dealing with all gains and all losses made in the tax year, what the overall final amount of CGT liability would be. What will we then do? any payment on account, we would deduct, of course, from that final total CGT liability for the year, and we'd simply have to pay off the remaining amount by, as ever, the 31st of January following the end of the tax year, the 2021 again, by the 31st of January 2022. 
So the chargeable gain will then also be included in the normal self-assessment CGT computation for the tax year, with any payment on account then being deducted in deriving the final CGT liability to be paid by, as we just said, our normal due date of the 31st of January following the tax year. Remember, of course, that we're dealing with residential property, and because it has a higher rate of tax, 18 and 28 instead of 10 and 20 percent, then any losses and AEA will be deducted firstly from the gain on the property in computing the CGT liability. We get to decide which gains made in the tax year will we offset our losses of the tax year and brought forward losses. Which gains we will offset those losses against and of course the AEA, the running order of course, current year losses to net off against gains, then we've got our AEA, then we've got any losses brought forward. And we're going to target with those deductions as we always do. Gains made on the disposal of residential property because they suffer the higher CGT rates. So we have, as luck would have it, a little illustration here that asks you to compute the amounts of CGT payable in respect of the 2021 tax year, stating what payments must be made and the dates by which they should be paid. So let's see what we've got. Lee is a higher rate taxpayer and during the 2021 tax year made the following chargeable disposals. Right, what have we got? On the 10th of May 2020, so the first in the tax year, again on the disposal of a painting. So again, 22,500 disposal of a painting. Just one of those other assets, of course. We then got yeah, a loss of 6,000 on disposal of shares. Now, whether it's a painting, whether it's shares, doesn't make any difference other than they're not residential property. These are other assets and therefore the lower CGT rates apply. But then, of course, here's the critical one. On the 31st of October 2020, a gain of 67,500 on the disposal of a residential property. Therefore, we will have to compute the payment on account that will be due to be paid and state when it will have to be paid by, as well as then computing when the final CGT liability will have to be paid. That'll be the 31st of January 2022, of course. But how much? So what will be that final CGT liability? Take away the first payment on account that you've computed and that will end up with well, that's the balance then to be paid by that next 31st of January date. So what have we got? We've got, first of all, the residential property being sold on the 31st of October. Therefore, a payment on account will be required to be made within 30 days. So by the 30th of November 2020 and will be computed as follows. Well, there's the starting point, the residential property gain. What could we offset against that? Firstly, what did we have? We had any losses in the tax year that were incurred prior to this disposal. So we have two losses, one here that is prior to the disposal of the residential property, the other is not. So there is that £6,000 that is deducted. What do we then deduct? the full AEA of the tax year. That will therefore, well, that would also be further reduced by if there were any uh, capital losses brought forward at the start of the tax year. And that then brings us to a taxable gain. But of course, what tax rate to apply? Back to the information in the question. I didn't stop when I said it, but you would note it very quickly in answering this particular question. Lee is a higher rate taxpayer. There we go, a higher rate taxpayer. 
So we know that there is no basic rate band remaining, so all of any taxable gain will be taxed at the highest CGT rate, which on residential property is of course 28%. Now again, check the numbers on that, hopefully I've used the calculator correctly, but that for me anyway came out to £13,776 there. And that payment will have to be made by the 30th November 2020, along with a return to HMRC giving the information pertaining to that calculation of CGT. What we'll then have to do, as we would always otherwise have to do, is to compute at following the end of the tax year and before the following 31st of January, what the overall taxable gains would be. Now we do have an other gain. We have a gain on a painting. So we keep separate the residential property gain, 67 and a half, from any other gains it happened to be a painting. And as we have said, any and all deductions available in the form of losses, whether they be uh, current, whether they be brought forward, and the AEA, all of these are deductible. So we've got both the loss incurred prior to and the loss incurred after the disposal of the residential property, along with the AEA being deductible, we want to get the best use out of these deductions as we possibly can. And that best use is by targeting those gains taxed at the highest CGT rates. What is that? It's residential property. Therefore, we've now got our two figures of taxable gain. One, a reduced figure from previous because of the extra deduction of the, uh, uh, the loss incurred later on in the tax year that can go against the residential property, but we've also now got the other gains to be taxed. On the residential property, 28%. On the other assets, 20% there. So hopefully those are the correct numbers. Put them together, we get our total CGT liability for the year, but that is not the amount now to be paid because we've already made a payment on account and that therefore is deducted here to give us what will be our final CGT liability payment due, as we keep saying, the 31st of January 2022. Again, like with all objective testing questions, which you're going to see in relation to CGT, whether that's Section A or whether it's Section B, you have to be very careful to read what is the requirement of the question and to read the information in the question. So you only answer what has been required of you and you're not missing any relevant information. So here we had picked up right from the start that Lee was a higher rate taxpayer. Now I wonder, as I read through that first of all, did you pick that up? Well, maybe not. You were just following what I was saying. I moved on, you moved on. You mustn't do that in the exam. You have to think, right, higher rate taxpayer, so that's going to be a 28% charge in relation to your payment on account. And of course, at the end of the tax year, in terms of all of the gains, going to be taxable at the higher rates, be it 28 for the residential property or 20% for the other assets there. We then looked, oh yes, there's a disposal of a residential property. There is a loss sustained prior to the disposal of the residential property. There was one after the disposal of the residential property. And then put these calculations together, firstly as here, for the payment on account. What was the gain made? What losses and AEA are available to go against it? Not, of course, the loss sustained after the gain was made during the tax year. Then put together a perfectly normal CGT calculation where you'd separate out residential property, apply deductions firstly against it, before then moving over to deal with any other assets. Reduce the gain that's taxable at 28% before reducing the gain that would be taxable at 20%. Get your total CGT liability for the year, take away your payment on account, and there's your balancing payment to be paid by the normal due date. 
new to us in terms of Finance Act 20. So whether that comes up in the very first exam, June 2020, I don't know. But it's sure to be tested at some point, probably more than once during this uh, first year in which this particular issue has been examined. So make sure, again, that you know how to deal with that. Um, this is a perfectly normal CGT liability calculation. This is the payment on account issue. All you have to know is what are the deductions that you are able to make from that gain to work out what is taxable and the tax year in which, the tax year in which it is payable. What did we have? Any current year capital losses incurred prior to the property disposal, followed by the AEA, followed then by any capital losses brought forward at the start of the tax year, if there were any. Make sure you can do that. Make sure by exam then you've learnt that rule of deductions. Now, one asset that you're likely to see again in an examination question being disposed of by a taxpayer to begin with, that taxpayer in these early chapters is an individual. In later chapters, it will also be an incorporated business, a company there. But one of the most tested uh, areas and assets that are being tested are shares. Because when dealing with shares, there's a particular issue. That I might have bought shares in a particular company not just on one occasion, and now I sell them all, but I've gradually accumulated over time more and more shares. When I've had a bit of spare cash, I've invested in this particular company. And then at some point, I need to yield some cash, and therefore I sell some, but not all of these shares. Again, what is the problem? Like it's been so many on so many occasions in terms of this chapter, in calculating a gain or a loss, it's what is the cost going to be. The problem this time is I didn't just buy one lot of shares at one cost. I bought these shares over what could be a very extended period of time at different points in time at different costs. So when I sell some shares, but not all of them, which ones am I selling? I know how much I'm selling them all for. Don't have a problem with the proceeds. The problem I have is which cost or costs will I use? Well, that you'll discover in the next chapter we have together, chapter 13.